Okay, we've learned a lot about classes and class variables and instances. Now it's time to go over all those things with a live example. So now I'm going to make a circle class that's going to calculate the area and circumference of a circle. And you are going to do this by passing in the radius to the object and then those calculations will be made for us in methods. And then we will also learn how to easily compare other circles to one another by comparing their radius. We are also going to be having a global variable of pi. So let's start out by declaring our class. Hopefully you all know how to do this. We're going to say class, the keyboard class, and then our name circle, uppercase circle. And then we're going to define our initialize method. And our initialize method is going to take in a radius. So I'm going to call, say it called radius and it's going to assign it to an instance variable of radius. So that local variable of radius right here is only created when the dot new method is run or when the initialize method is run, which is when you call dot new, which we will do when we finish our class and it assigns it to the instance variable, which is an at sign before it at radius and it's stored there. Okay, now to be seen outside of this class, which I'll show you later, you also need to do attribute accessor and, and give it a symbol of your variable name. So I gave it colon radius to say, hey, I want this variable to be able to be modified and read outside of this class. I'll go into more than that later and show you guys the different ways you can access attributes. Okay. Another thing I'm going to do is we're also going to make a class variable at the very top. And the way you make a class variable is by putting your variable name before two ampersands. So I'm going to say at pi and I'm going to assign it to 3.1428. Three. Now that I have a class variable, I'm going to be able to use that class variable throughout all my classes to be able to take advantage of this. A good example of a class variable is a constant number that doesn't change like pi so you can reuse it, reuse it over and over again. A class variable is only made once so I don't need to keep making memory and taking up space for additional pi variables even though I'm just using the same number over and over again. I just need one pi variable. Now we are going to write a method to calculate the circumference. Simply just, again, make a method called circumference and the way circumference is calculated is two times pi times radius, two pi r. And just remember to reference those variables with the appropriate at symbols, two at symbols for class variables and two at symbols for instance variables. And now let's make one for area. I'm going to simply again do the area formula, which is pi times the radius squared, which takes two stars to square something. So that's how you get the area and that's how you get the circumference. Now let's run an example just to make sure our code works. Okay, what we're going to do here is I'm going to make a variable called circle one and we're going to set to circle dot new and we'll give it a radius of three and I'm going to print out circle one dot circumference. And so now when I print that out, I should get something like 18.85 and I do. And let's also try circle one dot area. And so when I do that, I get 28.28, which is correct. You can calculate yourself if you want. So that's pretty handy. Now I could also make another circle here and I could call it circle two and assign it to be circle dot new and give it a radius of five and then print out, you know, circles two's circumference and one circumference and then I'll get different values. If you notice here, I get 31.2479999 repeating until I get a seven. That is because this number may be infinite, but what's happening is that I only have enough space for a float in Ruby to store 
this many decimal numbers, so it's stopping after the last nine, after the seven. And then the area, it gives me a nice 78.57. Now, to go back and use the knowledge of blocks that we use, we also we can make this easier by, for instance, making circle one and circle two into an array and calling dot each on that array. We don't need to make that array into a variable. And I could simply call dot each and then make a do block where I simply make something into a circle or I make my pass in variable circle and then do puts circle dot circumference and puts circle dot area. And once I do that, I don't need these two lines of code now and I can easily print out all of my values. Pretty nice. Now we're going to modify our class again to make it even more special. One thing I can do and that I haven't showed you guys yet is the power of a two S method, two underscore S, which is short for a two string method, which is very common in many other programming languages. But in Ruby, we just call it two S, which is synonymous with two string. And what this is supposed to do is return a string resembling what we want of this class. So maybe we want a string that prints out the radius of the circle, the circumference and the area of the circle. So we can do this by making the last line in our method or the only line in our method, all of those things. So I can simply say radius colon and then use string interpolation hashtag curly bracket to insert the radius. And then I could do circumference Again, do string interpolation. And to call the circumference method within my class, I simply can just do circumference. And to, to call the area method within our class, I can simply call area. So now anytime I print out either just the object or I call 2s on the object, this string will be returned to me. Let me show you guys an example. Instead of calling printing out the circle circumference and circle, circle area right here, I'm simply just going to print out circle right here. And what that is going to do is when I just print out an object, what actually happens is Ruby looks at your two underscore s method and returns that. So since now we've implemented that, it gave me radius three, circumference this, area this. So that's a much nicer way of printing everything out. Now, if I got rid of this, and save the code and ran it, I would get this random code. And that's because everything in Ruby actually has a class it defaults to through a term we haven't heard yet called inheritance. And inheritance allows you to basically have basic methods that every object has and then you inherit them. And if you choose to, you can override them. So in this case, the default 2s method prints out the name of the class and then the memory location it's stored at with some hashtags and arrows around it. But if I override it and put it back here, I can override it and then get the value I want. That's the power of a 2s method. Now we're going to look at comparison. One way we could do to compare something is we could simply define our own equal equals method. So I could define my equal equals method by just doing def equals equals. It's that easy, I promise. And equal equals also takes another parameter. We'll call it other circle. And to compare if the circles are the same, we can simply just compare their radiuses. So I can do at radius equals other circle dot radius. So that will return a true or false value if they're false or not. So what I'm gonna do is compare them. So I'm going to compare, compare circle one to circle two down here. What's the value going to be, guys? Is it going to be true or false? It should be false. And I get false right here very nicely. So now I'm able to compare the objects. Very awesome. Now, if I get rid of this method, I don't even know what's going to happen. I still get false, and that's because they are not exactly the same object. But let's see if I make this five. And then I run it, I get true. And now if I delete the equals method, I get false. So 
when I do the comparison, it's checking to see if they're the exact same object, which means that they they were made at the exact same memory location. And I could get that value if I didn't define a equals equals method by doing circle one equals circle one. There you go, I got circle one equals circle one because they're the same object and they point to the same place in memory. But now I get false if I actually try something with the same values as I want, but not the same location. Now that I have this method back, one more thing we can do is we can go over this attribute accessor because it's actually pretty important, but pretty weird. It's one of the weirdest things in Ruby because you suddenly have to use this thing you've never used before or, or rarely see. In classes, there's the notion of how much access you should have to a variable. There's the notion to maybe you can see this variable's value, but you shouldn't be able to change it, to uh, rewrite it, to override it, as we say. For instance, you should never be able to, to change the value of pi in a program. If someone were able to use your program and change the value of pi and then play around with the program, well, that would alter maybe all the math in your program. Now, that isn't a that's why you can't access pi outside of this circle class. If someone were able to play with our code, they would be able to create circles, but they couldn't change the value of pi, which would be very wise. Now, it is up to us to decide if we want to allow the user to be able to change the current radius of a circle once it's created. Because right now, you can only design the circle at the very beginning of the object's life when you create it with the dot new keyword. Attribute accessor allows you to read and write to the same variable, which is the programmer's way of saying you can update it or view this variable's value. That's very that's very cool. So if I want to do circle one dot radius equals seven with the accessor, I could perfectly do that. And then when I rerun this, I'm going to get radius of seven, as you see right there. Now, if I just wanted to say attribute reader, which is another type of attribute reader we can do, I will get an error, undefined method radius equals. So it means that I can't set the radius or any variable to a value. I can just read it. So I can simply do circle, put circle dot radius, and I get five and everything runs smoothly. Another thing I could do is I could do attribute writer. And this says, hey, you can only update the value of radius. And so now I get another error, a different undefined error, which says undefined method radius, which means, hey, you can't read this value, you can only update it. So now if I update radius by changing this line back to assigned to nine, I assigned to something, I now get undefined method for radius, radius equals five, no method error from line 29. The reason I'm getting that error now is because in my equals equals method, I'm calling dot radius. So I'm trying to read it when I only have written permissions. So I can only write to radius. I can't update anything else. What that means is I need to actually change this back to attribute accessor to be able to read and write to it at the same time. So now you understand that you probably won't use attribute writer that much because you can already update the variable. If you're able to update the variable, you probably want to be able to see it too. So use attribute reader if you only want the user to be able to see the variable and not change it, and attribute accessor if you want them to be able to do both. So once I change it back to that, I can then change my radius to nine. I can then print my radius if I want to, or print circles to radius, and I can do that at will. That's the power of the attribute accessors. They basically permit which variables the user can see or interact with or update. And comparisons, there are actually even more comparisons, which we'll go over with inheritance and modules. And that's it. We learned a lot in this video, class variables, string methods, math, and instance variables. I hope you guys enjoyed this video.